Hello, this is uh, Richard Ellingworth. This time I'm going to Madeira. I'm staying in the Premier Inn at uh, Newcastle Airport. Uh, very strong, solid doors, which I know is important from past experience. Um, and quite reasonable prices. And this, incidentally, is pretty much the first time I've recorded serious video with the Canon EOS M50 which Canon were kind enough to give me with £120 cash back off. And so whilst this may not be the tip-top mirrorless camera of choice, it's certainly one of the cheapest. Well, when it gets cheaper than buying it second hand, you know you're getting a bargain. And frankly, I have been very impressed. Its focusing is particularly good and I have no qualms at all with the picture quality. I have a Panasonic Lumix camera uh, the G80 or G85 I believe if you're in America but it's only 16 megapixels and probably wouldn't perform quite as well in low light I'm not saying this is perfect one thing I do find a little bit strange is the inability to enable the electronic shutter it makes a noise like my old DSLR every time it takes a photo which is particularly off-putting when you're taking them in quick succession this is another thing it uh, has quite a high burst speed, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's certainly far and fast enough. The buffer isn't particularly big, so you have to use it with care in short bursts. But, yeah, it works, I can't complain. And some people say the build quality is rather poor, which to my way of thinking is another way of saying it's extremely light. Um, I mean, I'm taking this as a second camera, along with my Fuji X-T20, and that's not exactly heavy but this docks it into a cock hat from the weight point of view. And of course, it also has the flippy out screen, which you will no doubt notice I'm using, because I'm gazing slightly off camera in order to watch my own image. But yeah, it's uh, quite pleased with it so far. It's behaved very well. Battery life? Mm, okay, not great, but good enough to my way of thinking. Just take a few spares with you. Anyway, uh, welcome to my hotel room. This is a typical Premier Inn hotel room. It has a bed, which has lights on either side of the bed, pillows, and a duvet. And now onto the really interesting bit. Boom, boom, boom. Right, you ready for this? Anyway, this is the really interesting bit, the bathroom, if you can hear me above the noise of this whiny fan, which is a tad interesting. You'll notice that the camera seems to have taken a preference for my reflection, rather than the original, so to speak. Anyway, notice the sink. We have a sink, this is good. We have some sort of strange soapy substance comes out of here, which I tend not to use. But, look at the tap. Now you Americans will no doubt love this, it's a mixer tap. I think they are a disaster in bathrooms. Let me demonstrate. If I were a caveman going down to the pool to wash my face, I would stick my head in the pond and wash my face, no problem. But we're civilised now and we have mixer taps. So if you imagine this basin is full of water and I wanted to wash my face, I now come along and do this. Doink! and I hit my head on the tap. Whose brilliant idea was that? It may surprise some people out there, but there is an invention, which I noticed that people in Prague don't seem to know anything about, called a plug, right? This has got one of those fancy wibbly wobbly things. It stops the water coming out. Now, this means if you want to get the right temperature of water in there, and you have two taps, you can put the plug in and then measure out the right amount of hot and the right amount of cold and get the temperature 
just right. And then what's more, the water stays there, or at least it would do if the plug fitted properly. Luckily I have a backup one of my own, right? This saves water and is therefore a good idea. So I don't see the point of mixer taps. There is an excuse for them in the kitchen, although frankly I think I still prefer to have uh, two of them. Uh, but there's no excuse whatsoever in the bathroom. This, this one isn't the worst example, it doesn't stick out all that far, so you can just about squeeze your face into the basin. But those tiny little ones with an enormous tap are a pain in the ass. I find myself trying to wiggle my head around the side of it. I, I hear you say, why don't you use a flannel? Well, why should I use a flannel? Half the soap goes on in a flannel and cleans the flannel. Why can't I just put it straight on my face? Anyway. I don't know if you find this a particularly interesting discussion, but uh, there you go. And of course, we also have a toilet, or a john, or whatever it is you call it where you live. And we have also a shower. Right, we also have a shower, a shower. This isn't too bad, it works quite well, you can get hot water out of it, which is always a bonus. However, if one looks at the head, at the top, let me just tilt this up a bit. Uh, right, you can see up there, there is indeed a head up there, right, you can see it, right? Great. It's fixed. This is not so good. If, if the designer had considered for a moment, they would have realised this is a really bad idea. If one is um, applying soap to certain parts of one's anatomy and then wishes to rinse it, it is not ideal to have the water coming out up there. Uh, do I need to uh, elucidate further? Mm, I think not. You get the idea. Better to have a thing on a hose which comes off. I suspect the reason they do it this way is it's harder to break one of these whereas the hosey things eventually fall apart but there you go you get what you pay for if you have any further comments about bathroom fittings and stupid designs in general leave them in the comments underneath thank you